I saw a video of you recently performing at, I believe it was some songwriter convention. It might have been the Song Studio songwriting uh, uh, workshop, but you played um, Magic Power from Triumph. And one of the things that blows my mind was, you know, you're you're pushing north of 60. We'll put it, leave it there. And your vocals and your guitar playing still sound incredible. And especially in a generation um, from the 80s who were known for pushing the upper limits of their vocals, for pushing the upper limits of their guitar playing. And a lot of those guys who are now in their upper 60s, they have lost a lot of that range. And my question to you is someone, I just turned 31 and I'm at the point now in my life where I'm realizing my mortality a little bit. Not that I'm like aging too much, but you know, I'm realizing like I'm not 22 anymore. How have, do you have any advice to younger musicians for maintaining their playing abilities and their singing abilities as you have? Yeah. But before I go there, you know, what you just said reminded me, there's a John Mayer song. I think it's called, uh, stop this train. And he's, and he's, he's using the voice of his father and his father says something like, yeah, turn, it's either 58 or 68. It's, I can't remember the number, but the, the rhyme is rene renegotiate. Like, yeah, turn 68, you'll renegotiate. And so, you know, I, when you were saying, well, I'm 31, I go, huh, like, I, I'm not, like, it doesn't bother me to talk about my age. I, you know, I, I turned 70 this summer. So, you know, uh. So I'm north of 70 now, never mind 60. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to be nice. Yeah, no, that's fine. I appreciate that. Um, but um, when I was a young man, and I, as Billy Joel would say, when I wore a younger man's clothes, I um, I realized that I didn't want to be burning my candle at both ends and that what I did in terms of singing and play was a kind of a great privilege that I kind of, I, I think of it as, you know, I have these gifts. They were given to me. I, it's not like I, you know, I'm gifted. I, you know, I'm trying to make myself seem, you know, uh, like uh, egotistical about this. I, I'm not. I'm humbled about this, that I I have this, I had this thing that I could do. I could sing really high. I could sing higher than most folks. I could play guitar better than most people. And in my uh, memoir, I talk about the fact that you know, I have this thing where I'm dextrosinistral, which is I do, you know, gross motor control with my left hand, uh, but I do fine motor control with my right. So I, when I was first playing guitar, I wanted to be like Paul McCartney, and I had a guitar teacher who was left-handed. He said, no, no, you're going to learn this way. And I went, this way? No, this is this feels weird. He goes, D trust me, give me a month. Your, your strong hand's going to be on the fretboard. You're going to have a huge advantage over all the rest of these right-handed people in the world. And if you think about numbers, you know, 10 people out of 100 are left-handed. One person out of 100 is dextrosinistral. So I had this kind of gift. As soon as I discovered a guitar this way, it was like, well, I'm off to the races here, you know? So if you're off to the races with gifts, how should you behave? Should I be staying up all night doing lines of coke and, and drinking in order to b bring the coke back down and, you know... uh. I, I could see that around me, and I went, nah, not the way, not, not the cloth I'm cut from. It doesn't make sense to me, you know. What I really want to do is be able to get up on stage tomorrow night in, you know, wherever we're going to be, you know, Deloitte, Tulsa, Norman, you know, somewhere in the Midwest, and I want to be able to bring it. I really want to be able to do it, you know. So there was a physical thing at the heart of all of this, that I wanted to protect, nurture, because it was part of the gifts thing, you know? And if the best thing about a gift is that it keeps on giving, or, you know, it's better to give than it is to receive, like, that was how I felt. I, I really felt like, I want to pass this along. I really want to, you know, have this be for the benefit of others, not just me, you know? Although, I'm in the middle of this, so I'm benefiting, you know? I'm digging the benefit of all of this. Um, and I'm enjoying it. I didn't want to do it and screw it up, you know. So that's my only spare Vader. You know, don't, don't stay up drinking too late. You know, get yourself a good night's sleep and make sure you hydrate. Are there any other technical things you were doing to maintain your voice? Because I mean, I even saw clips from you from five years ago singing uh, 
magic power. And I mean, you're still hitting the same notes you were hitting in your in your 30s. I mean, are there were there t are you warming up every day? Are you are you doing any vocal lessons? Are you doing like dehumidifiers? I mean, are you are you you know are you doing anything like that? No, no. Uh, uh, although, uh, you know, you're being very kind to me. And I'm going to tell you, you know, if you go and you see a video of Magic Power from five years or 10 years ago or whatever, and you go, oh, you're still hitting the high notes. Well, I go, okay. First of all, the videos where I didn't hit the notes, those aren't the ones we're going to put up on YouTube. You know, like the ones where I was flat as a pancake and having a tough night, you know, that's not the ones that are going to last and get a million hits. A. B. That Magic Power one, you're, I think you're probably referencing the one that I did at Daryl's place. It, you know, and and the sound man there is unbelievably great. I wish I could remember his name, but uh, uh, so I could give him credit. But when you've got a really great mix live, it it inspires you and it helps you to sing great. And that guy, I mean, come on, he'd been Daryl Hall's sound guy for decades, so he knows how to make a singer happy, and he made me happy that night, and I was able to bring it. Okay, next thing. That acoustic, there's, I'm playing in a duo with another guy. Our guitars are tuned down a half step. So I wasn't hitting the notes that I hit. I was hitting ones that were, you know, and I had already artfully rearranged some of the lines so that I'm not quite see, singing the same lines that I sang on the record back in 1981. <laughs> in Magic Bar, I'm going, yeah, what year was that? Like, I, I'm not. And since then... It's gotten even worse. Like, you know, I've lost, like I used to be able to hit live and I, I it's because of the way my, my throat is. I don't have a, like a, a complete falsetto. I have a kind of a half falsetto. It's half head, half chest. It's kind of, because I have a nice narrow set of vocal cords. I could hit really high notes and I could sing high E's, high F sharps. So the 14th fret on the first string of a guitar, I could hit that note night after night after night like we did a thing once where we were opening for journey and i was backstage and steve perry came to me and he said are you hitting high d's and e's in that song and i went yeah and he went oh my god now when steve perry is telling you hey man you could sing high that's that's a tremendous compliment because steve perry one of my favorite singers from that era and he can't hit him anymore and neither can I. Like, I, you know, I've got nothing above an A anymore. So fifth fret, first string of the guitar. That's pretty much what I've got now. But not every night. Some nights, it, it, it's really not there. And the other thing is, and, I, you know, I, I tell you this so that, you know, for the benefit of all the people that are ever going to watch this, you, you want to artfully construct your set list. So that you give yourself, first of all, anything that's going to be really high and really challenging, get yourself warmed up and then have it be early in the set when you're fresh. But after you've been up on stage for an hour and 15 minutes, yak, 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 and you've been singing, then don't have anything that's going to really, have it be that you're just going to have the gun throat crap at the end of the set where it won't really matter if you're a little out of tune, but it's got high energy and it's going to work great. But... Also, if you've got challenges in terms of range, well, make the song before it be one where no challenges at all. It's easy. It's soft. It's quiet. It's down here. It's on a... And make that so you have get five minutes of it just resting so that you're gearing yourself up for when you're going to have to bring it later. You know, like... Um, these were things that I sort of understood naturally. So your question about warming up I would, I, yes, I warm up, and the older I got, the more I had to warm up a little bit. But I never really want about. I kind of feel like it doesn't take me much to get my instruments ready to go, uh, because I was always like I did a lot of sports when I was a kid in high school, and I was a sprinter. I was not a long distance runner, uh, and yeah, I did a little bit of stretching. I did, but essentially, it was like. Bang, the gun goes off, and I'm just using the adrenaline, and for the next 10 seconds, you know, I'm going to be roaring down that straightaway, and that was the kind of guy I was. So musically, I sort of, I am kind of that same kind of a person. I, you know, the gun goes off, and <laughs> I'm going to try and bring it, you know, 
and it's it's part of the adrenaline of the moment. Uh, having said that, of course, I'm also not the kind of guy. Bruce Springsteen and what he does and with his instrument, and he does three hour shows. I go, not me. Like, I can't do that. Like, I could never do that. You know, once a set got past its seventy five minute mark, I was going. It's time for Uncle Ricky to rest. You know. Oh, uh, an encore at the 90-minute mark? Whoa, I would go back and I would be passing out in the dressing room, lying down and going, I'm done. Somebody break me some some tea. <laughs> so I am going to push back a little bit because I, I know you're trying to humble, be humble here, but it's not only just the range that you... you I, I know you've said you've lost a little bit of the range, but it's also the power you have in your voice, even at 70 years old. So, you know, even take Steve Perry, he did an album a couple years ago and, you know, obviously the songs were really good, but obviously he wasn't Don't Stop Believing," right? You, on the other hand, like I said, that clip at the um, song studio songwriting workshop you did, um, Singing Magic Power, you dropped it from D to an A, uh, the key, you still sing with such, I don't want to say authenticity, but it's like the, the conviction is still there in you. Is that something that's like is that in that kind of same world as like crafting the the set list to to work in your favor is that kind of in a similar thing or is just that just something that just natural talent of being con having that conviction when you sing uh well a couple of things uh, and I'm gonna, well, uh, there's three things that I want to talk about so first of all I'm gonna, I w I'm going to backtrack and I want to correct you that clip that you that you saw it wasn't from song studio it was from something called 97 South 97 South Song Sessions. And it was in Penticton. Pen 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 a guy named Robert Ott runs this thing every year. And he brings songwriters, essentially, to talk about songwriting. And it was a fantastic event. And it was really good. But I was kind of a keynote guy. And then he interviewed you. And then he, there's a guitar there. And every now and then it's like, okay, yeah, pick up the guitar. But as you said, yeah, I Magic Power moved from the key of D down to the key of A. The key of A works for it because it gives open strings. It allows you to really kind of, in a way, there was some Pete Townsend in the way that I wrote that song originally. And now that I uh, moved it into a new key, I realized, wow, this thing, I can really dig into the guitar here and this really works. So I find that inspiring. It helps me as a singer if I'm finding a way into the song. And I think this is, sort of answering your question in a backhanded way, but nevertheless. Um, when, any, when you're a singer and you're doing a song, you are uh, interpreting the song for an audience, and you are now sort of like an actor or an actress. You are trying to figure out, what's my motivation here? How do I find my way emotionally to the heart of what's going on here? And so you need to be able to bring that and find that in the song every single time you bring it to, to a performance in a in a public situation. So that's why you rehearse, that's why you practice, that's why you arrange all of the things that you do in preparation for the moment where you go, all right, I'm getting to the chorus of this tune. I gotta bring it. You know, I, I gotta dig down deep and I gotta bring it. And so now you sort of touched on this. There are these physical, mechanical things that happen, the engagement of your diaphragm, in order to be able to be pushing that air out of your lungs. It was always easy for me. I was an athlete. I understood the whole thing about core. And now from your core, strength comes to do many things. You know, paddle a boat. You know, uh, be a baseball player that can climb the wall to make the catch. Like all of those things, core is incredibly important. So singing, you wouldn't think, oh, I, I should go to the gym. I should work out in order to be a better singer. But you should. Like, and not enough singers do it. You know, like it really is a thing about having your body be able to commit. And I would be in classes sometimes with a singer and they'd be singing and I would say, stop, stop. You are supposed to be bringing this song from the balls of your feet to me. And you're not even, 80% 80, 80 of you is not even engaged in this. And I need it right from your tree roots. you got to bring it. Like, come on, commit. 
And I think that's the big thing is that people always have this, uh, it's almost like a shyness where they go, uh, I'm, I'm too shy. I don't want to give myself up to the song. And you go, no, 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 that's, you get the wrong idea here. You don't matter. Stop trying to protect your own fragile ego. Stop trying to protect your image of yourself. Just commit to the music and let them. It's why guitar players make all of those, you know, the Joe Walsh faces when they're, when they're playing guitar? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's because you're in the music now. You're in the guitar now. You're not you. You're not worrying about what your face looks like. That's a stupid thing to worry about, you know? Just worry about whether or not you're squeezing the notes out of the strings. The same thing with your body. Like, when you sing, you gotta find that thing inside you, and then you gotta bring it out. Uh, so, I think I answered all of the, the, the three things that I thought of when you were asking my question. No, I love that. One of the best things I ever heard from a producer was uh, singing in the studio or singing in, in, in any situation is a form of acting and you need to play the character you are, you are performing as. And if you don't, you're going to, you're going to miss the mark every time. Yeah. And the thing about that acting thing is, and if that, ask any actor, you, you are not, you're not there. You, your job is to find who is this person that I'm doing. And you must be that person. You must be that character. And so, you know, in music, you must be that music. That's where you must be. You must be in that that passage, that piece of music, that lyric, that melody. You know, that's where you have to be. And it's actually a pretty simple thing to say. It's, it, you know, it, it's a very hard thing to do. You know, like, yeah. To, and for that to become almost like second nature, you know, I spent a lifetime at it, and there were times where I was, you know, hey, I had a good day. There were times where I went, oh, just get, you know, somebody get me the hemlock. I'm ready to drink it. It's like, you know, like, it's just, you, you, you know, you disappoint yourself because it's tough. But, you know, one of the things that I would always tell students is, you've, you, this is what you want to be? You want to be an artist? Okay. Uh, let's liken this to uh, sports. And the greatest hitter of all time in baseball was uh, the Georgia Peach Ty Cobb. And he was a son of a bitch, but he batted .367, a lifetime batter, the greatest of all time. So he failed more than six times out of ten. He failed. He was the greatest of all time, and he failed more than he succeeded. So hey, if you can bat 300, man, you get to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, probably you're going to be in the Hall of Fame because uh, your average uh, major leaguer is hitting somewhere between 250 and 265, 270 maybe in a good year. You know, um, so that that's failure is a way of life in the sport of baseball. You know, so um, in music, you kind of got to get used to that, too. You know, you take your victories where you when you can get them. And you're always focused on them and working towards them. But you must learn to be okay with failure. That your song that you're trying to write didn't work out. That, yeah, your performance Wednesday in that bar was not very good, you know. Like, there's guys that I really admire, like Pat Metheny. He keeps a notebook, even now. He does a show. He sits down and he writes out, he listens to the whole show. And he makes notes. Like, he... Cr he, there's, there's probably no greater guitar artist on the planet Earth than Pat Metheny, but that's how hard he still works. You know, that's, that's what he still does because he realizes eh, it's easier to fail than, than it is to succeed. I cannot give myself a break here. I must maintain this work ethic, this discipline, because, you know, born to die, born to fail, like that's part of the thing you have to accept that and be be grateful for it happy 